In the build up to TBC, I put a video out looking at all of the Phase 1 Badge of Justice gear. I probably put out a video in Phase 3, Phase 5, looking at all the Badge of Justice gear as well, but I haven't actually done that for Wrath of the Lich King. So today, we're going to look at Emblems of Heroism. And then in a video in the next couple of days, we'll look at all the Emblems of Valor gear. But today, we're going to look at Heroism and we're going to look at all the items that you can get and all the heirlooms you can get as well, because the heirlooms are also for Emblems of Heroism. So first of all, you can get a Frozen Orb, which is used in crafting recipes, and this is for 10 emblems. Lots of people are going to want these early on because they're used for things such as your leg enchant from level working or tailoring. Then each class gets a specific neck. So for tanks you get this with strength, stamina, defense, dodge and hit rating. Casters get encircling burnished gold chains where you get stamina, intellect and spirit with hit and spell power. For healers you've got lattice choker of light with crit, mana per five and spell power. And finally for attack power based users you're going to get pendant of the outcast hero which has got agility, stamina, crit and attack power. One thing worth bearing in mind these only cost 25 emblems but you could go to a jewel crafter and they can make basically a neck that's epic at the same item level for more or less every class. So if you're prioritizing what you're spending your emblems on, you might choose to get a crafted neck instead of spending 25 on one of these. Then for the trinkets that pretty much everybody's going to get at some point or another. So Mirror of Truth is for the attack power users where it gives you 84 crit and a chance to get a thousand attack power for 10 seconds. That's a lot of attack power. Sundial of the Exiled is the caster version giving you 84 crit and a chance for your harmful spells to give you 590 spells power for 10 seconds. That's a lot of spell power. The Egg of Mortal Essence is for the casters and that increases spell power by 98. Your direct healing and heal over time spells have a chance to increase your haste rating by 505 for 10 seconds. That's a lot of... no. And finally for the tanks you've got Valor Medal of the First War which increases your dodge by 84 and on use increases the dodge rating by 335 for 20 seconds. All round all four of these trinkets very strong early on. Then each class gets a belt so you've got a male belt with haste, spell power, Power and mana per five. All of these belts are 40 emblems, by the way. You've got Elegant Temple Gardens Girdle, which is a cloth girdle with spell power, mana per five, a socket, and 43 spirit, as well as obviously getting your stamina and intellect. Jorax Crocolisk Skin Belt, which is particularly good actually, because not only has it got a socket, but also getting expertise. So you're going to want expertise fairly early, and getting crit expertise and attack power on a belt with a socket, very nice for 40 emblems. There's also a Holy Paladin Belt with a socket, giving crit haste and spell power. A cloth belt with hit haste and spell power, a plate belt with crit and haste, a male agility belt with hit attack power and armor pem, a leather caster belt with crit and spell power, and finally a plate tanking belt with defense, dodge and parry. Now don't get me wrong, all of these belts are pretty good, but there are normally very very close or if not a little bit better belts that you can actually get from heroics as well. So for 40 emblems, I don't know if I would be wanting to get these early. I would more use it as a last resort. If I didn't get one of the belts that I want from somewhere else, I'd pick one of these up. You've also got a couple of offhands, so a haste and spell power offhand with stamina, intellect and spirit, and ward of the violet citadel, which is a hit, crit and spell power offhand. Both of these only cost 25, so if you've got a decent main arm weapon, this can be quite a cheap upgrade to chuck in your offhand. There's a few different 200 eye level shields that you can actually get in phase one. So you can get a Titan Steel one, which is crafted by a blacksmith. You can get one from Culling of Stratholm Heroic, or you can buy one from this vendor for 35 emblems. They're all very similar. So which one you get isn't going to make too much of a difference. But on the basis that you could get one crafted for gold, or you could get one dropped from a heroic, this would probably be a last resort for me because I'd rather save the 35 emblems and use them on something else. But if you did want this shield, it gives you defense, dodge and hit, as well as obviously stamina and strength. The protective barricade of light is obviously your typical holy paladin or resto shaman shield with crit, spell power and mana per five. Again, you could probably get better than this, but if you've got 35 emblems laying about and you're just about to go into your first nax and you're still using a green shield, for example, then probably pick this up. Grass cutter is a very, very nice one handed sword with crit and attack power, 1.6 speed. I've actually seen this in numerous phase one sort of pre-raid bis lists so definitely worth getting before nax if you're something like a dual wield unholy dk or a rogue or whatever there's use cases for this for quite a few classes also a throwing weapon for only 15 badges now there are throwing weapons that you can get out of pickpocketed lock boxes so this might not actually be worth the 15 emblems but on the basis you're probably not going to be that worried about going around pickpocketing trying to get one this probably is the easiest option you also have pride which is an offhand fist weapon with 2.5 speed with hit and attack power that's not bad at all 
or Rolf sends Ripper, which is an offhand dagger, for 50 emblems. I'm not going to go into too much detail about the Librams, but I will just put them all on screen because you can obviously get for 15 emblems of heroism, you're either going to get your Holy Librum, your Prot Librum, your Ret Librum, and obviously the same applies for both Shaman and Druids. They're all going to be useful and absolutely worth getting for the sake of 15 emblems because you might not have one that's better. And then everybody, every class for 60 emblems, you can get your tier 7 gloves. And for a further 80 emblems, you can get your tier 7 chest. So most people will be getting their tier 7 gloves and chest because you'll just be farming out loads of heroics in week one, trying to get all the gear that you can before you before Nax opens, before you go into Nax. So absolutely, getting your two set without even worrying about doing VOA or raiding, probably worthwhile. Definitely check out your BIS list, your tier 7 BIS list, because maybe it would be a waste. Maybe it's not even your BIS. You might want the head instead of the gloves, for example. But even as an upgrade, I think most people are going to get these early on, even if they are going to replace them later on down the line. Obviously, if you're into your PvP, this is also where you can spend your emblems on your PvP gear. So chests... It's only the blue PvP gear, mind you, but chests are 45 emblems. You can get the head for 45 emblems, the shoulders are 30 emblems, and the gloves are 30 emblems. Oh, and I missed the legs. The legs are 45 emblems. So you can get your full five-piece PvP gear to get in BGs or arenas and start ripping it up from just farming heroics. I did say we'd also look at the heirlooms now. Obviously, they're not going to show any stats because they're for level one and they'll scale up as you level, but they will give you things like strength and stamina or agility and stamina or intellect and stamina, you know, depending on what ones you're using. But obviously, you can get all different types of chest for 40 emblems. You can get all the different types of shoulders for 40 emblems. The shoulders give you 10% extra XP from killing monsters and completing quests, as does the chest so you get a 20% bonus XP to your quests and killing monsters. Not quite as good as the 50% joyous journeys XP buff you know from pre-patch and all that but still better than nothing. The one-handed weapons are 40 emblems so you can get a dagger, you can get a one-handed mace, you can get a main hand sword. Devout Aura Stone Hammer is a spell power one-handed mace with 2.7 speed. As you can see the spell power weapon is 50 emblems. Then for 65 emblems you can get the two-handed weapons like a two-handed nice big slow axe. You can get a bow, a spellcaster staff which is dignified headmaster's charge. So basically every class has got something. Even druids haven't been forgotten you can get your repurposed lava dredger which i must say does look brilliant if that don't take you back to molten core i don't know what will the last two items to talk about are the trinkets so for 50 emblems you can get discerning eye of the beast which restores two percent max mana whenever you kill a mob that yields experience or honor and swift hand of justice which does the same but it gives you two percent health now both of these are not unique so you can get 100 emblems and buy two of the mana trinkets or two of the health trinkets, or you could use one of each. I thought that was worth mentioning. One thing I nearly forgot to mention is if you go over to Mel Francis, the exotic mount vendor in Dalaran, you also can spend 200 emblems on a Reigns of the Woolly Mammoth. In the next video, we'll go over all the emblems of Valor gear. But for now, I'm going to sign off. So be sure to like and subscribe. Smash that like button. Definitely. Don't leave without hitting like. I'll wait. All right, whatever. Check out Rested XP in the pinned comment and roll the outro. There's lots of ways you can support the channel to keep me here putting out World of Warcraft content and covering all future MMOs. Consider joining the channel as a member. You get access to emotes. Everyone will know you're a member when you comment on future videos because you get a nice icon next to your name. And you get access to members only videos, which I'll be putting a lot of on the channel throughout the year. Additionally, there's a Patreon link in the description as well. Thank you for watching all the way to the end and I'll see you on the next one.